my name is Jerry Croth. I'm a professor in California. Uh, I've done a couple videos on these kind of subjects. And uh, I wrote a book on this subject, on the collapse, which we're not going to be talking about here. Uh, this is kind of on the order of a red alert, okay? Very short video, made in August of 2024. So um, I want to get uh, this. I'm a psychologist, not an economist. This is about you making your decisions. That's a psychological subject. Okay. I want to introduce you to a, a single statistical uh, thing. Okay. It's called the Index of Leading Economic Indicators. You may or may not have heard of this. It's a government statistic. Very, very well known. Very sensitive. Now, there are lagging indicators and there are leading indicators. Watch very carefully. A lagging indicator is something like the unemployment rate. When the market goes down and there's a recession, then people start losing their jobs. That lags what's happening. It's a lagging indicator. A leading indicator is something that's pointing towards the future, predicting. For example, this is one of 10 things that are part of that index. Building permits, who cares? Well, the number, if building permits are going up, that means that more people are going to hire excavators and they're going to buy more cinder blocks and they're going to buy lumber and they're going to buy in the future. Uh, they're going to hire a contractor, an architect, an electrician, a plumber. So all those things are going to happen in the future when you see building permits go up. So that's an indication that the economy is going to grow and it's getting better, right? Now watch carefully. That is the index of leading economic indicators. That's not good news. It just keeps going down and down and down, which means the economy is shrinking. Building permits, cars, whatever you want to talk about. That's what that measures, okay? Now, here's a, a, lo a longer graph going all the way back to 2021 20, and a half. It's declined for 30 months, folks. Okay, this is August of 2024. It's been declining. And I want to alert you to this fact. It has not turned around. Now, what does that mean to you? So you say to yourself, do you believe there's going to be a recession? You could say, well, I might, there might be a hard landing, it might be a soft landing, maybe no landing at all. I don't think there's going to be a recession. Whatever your thinking is, I want you to see something. This is, see those little gray bars? Those are recessions going all the way back to 1969. Watch carefully. You see number one here? That's the leading indicators in blue going down before the recession. Okay? That's number two. Leading indicators go down before the recession, before the recession, before the recession, before the recession. And here we are, 2008, still going down before the recession. The eighth, eighth one is a tiny one. Here is where you are right now. This is where you are right now, going down, but no recession. Now, let's... Let's think about logically, all right? Eight times in a row, it's gone down and predicted a recession. And you're saying to yourself, I don't think there'll be a recession. Well, if you're saying that to yourself, this time is different, there won't be any recession. Well, you have an 11% chance of being right and an 89% chance of being wrong, one in nine. All right, let's take a look at the stock market. Do you believe the stock market is going to, they're going to lower interest rates and we're going to have a big boom and a bull market and everything's going to be great and rosy? Okay, what is your thinking about the future of the stock market? Okay, I want to show you the stock market now. I don't have as long a graph here, but take a look very carefully. The red, uh, the blue is the stock market and the orange is the leading indicators. Watch this. You see that? The leading indicators go down, the market goes down. 
The leading indicators go down, the market goes down. The leading indicators in 2008 go down way before the market goes down. Number four, the leading indicators go down, the market goes down, but number five, the leading indicators go down, but the market goes up. Look at that. That is weird. That is abnormal. That is strange. I do not know the answer to that. Some people say, we printed so much money, there's a lot of money sloshing out there. I don't know the answer to that. All I know is, if you're looking at historical trends, that's weird. Okay? So, in other words, since 2021, stocks went up 49%, but the leading indicators went down 15%. Very weird, folks. So if you say, I'm going to stay put, I, I, I can ride this out. I see these dips and then they come back. I'm going to ride it out. Well, four of the last five declines of the leading economic indicators led to a decline in the market. If you stay put, as you say, you have one chance in five of being correct. 20% chance of being correct, 80% chance of being wrong. Okay, I'm thinking about your thinking. So you might ask, well, what are the big guys doing? You know, well, what did Warren Buffett do? Warren Buffett sold his stocks and raised cash. Okay, he sold so much stock, he's got $277 billion in his pocket in cash, not in the market. He got out of the market. If you did what Buffett did, if you did what Buffett did and raised cash, you could wait until the leading economic indicators turn positive. Wait three months. Watch it, get, watch it increase and then join in. Uh -huh. So there are more billionaires who are... Jamie Dimon sold last year a million shares of his company. Raised a lot of money for himself. Jeff Bezos sold Amazon stock and sold Amazon stock and put the money in his pocket. Mark Zuckerberg sold half a billion dollars worth of his stock, put the money in his pocket. Jeff Bezos sold just another five billion, just that's another five billion in my pocket. Looks like the big guys are unloading, okay? Are you still saying to yourself, I'll wait it out and I'll see, I'll see what's happening? Uh, well, there's an 80% chance that you're wrong if you keep doing that. Five years, if you say to yourself, I'll wait it out because the market always goes up. Five years after the economic crisis of 2008, 44% of families less, who earned less than $30,000 a year had still not recovered. Nine years after the financial crisis, 30% of Americans had still not recovered. But you're betting that you're going to wait this out and it'll all, you'll recover whatever your losses that you incur. I'm not sure about that thinking. Maybe you should rethink your position. Okay? Mainstream media, remember, is always telling you, please don't panic. Oh, don't panic. Never do that. Uh, don't panic during market disruptions. Uh, USA Today, don't panic when the stock market sinks. Oh, stay in, little guy. Stock markets are in turmoil, but economists say don't panic. The New York Times says do not sell in a panic. Do they represent you or do they represent the ol oligarchy that wants you to stay in the market? Uh, Los Angeles uh, television program, David Lazarus, says don't panic. Okay, And if you look at financial news, I'm not accusing these people of bias, but they have a conflict of interest. When the market goes down, they have a program that says buy the dip, stay in. Because their jobs depend on it too. Okay, so uh, I kind of like Warren Buffett's approach. Okay, that's my personal opinion. He sold. He got out. He sensed something, and they he didn't listen to the New York Times and said, "Don't panic." He just did this a few days ago. He's got two hundred and seventy-seven billion dollars in his pocket, waiting for the next opportunity. Now, the Buffett indicator. Buffett is one of the best stock market pickers in the history. And he has an indicator, his own statistic, for how overpriced the market is. Watch this. These are the red and the blue are all 
different versions of the Buffett indicator. How expensive is the market? He gets out when it's too expensive. So look at that. That's the high of the Buffett indicator before the 2000 dot com bubble. That was expensive. He got out. You should have gotten out if you were invested. This is 2008. It was lower, but it was still high. Okay, hit by historical standards. And of course, the market went down 54 percent. And in 2000, it went down 58 percent. Now, here's where we are right today. Look, that's where we are now. It is more expensive now than it was in 2000 and in 2008. And that's why Warren left. But you're staying in. It's higher than it's been. Second highest it's in its, since 1950. All right. So this is not investment advice. This is your decision that you're making. You can sit it out for the next 12 months and chill, say, I can weather this storm. Or you can do what Warren Buffett did and raise cash. Okay, so I'm making this video in August of 2024. We'll see what happens um, in the next year. So that's the book about all, all the data from this talk is in that book. It's available at Amazon if you want to look it up. Uh, you can contact me at that address, and I want to thank you for watching, and I wish you well in your decision-making. Bye.